Praise the Lord. I trust you are doing well in the Lord today. Now today, I would like us to do a practical session of praying in tongues and receiving revelations and prophecies from the Holy Spirit. Now, this is something that happens when you pray in tongues because what happens is that when you pray in tongues, you will be charged up in the Spirit. And when you are charged up in the Spirit, of course, there are many other possibilities that are open to you, spiritual possibilities that are actually open to you. So that means that the Holy Spirit can actually give you revelations, the Holy Spirit can actually give you prophecies, the Holy Spirit can actually like, like lead you in diverse ways in the Spirit. And also when you are in this kind of heavenly mood after praying in tongues, what happens is that you can actually just ask the Holy Spirit for different things and he will actually give you the power to do those kind of different things. So if you have been called into the prophetic, if God has called you to be a prophet, of course praying in tongues is one of those things that will actually propel you into that calling that God has given you. Because the way prophecy works is that prophecy relies on the emotions of the prophet. And this is why you may also see most of the prophets actually, they usually require some form of, um, some form of stimulation before they begin prophesying. And even those like environments where those prophets are actually giving prophecies, in most cases, they would want a lot of noise and a lot of excitement around them before they can prophesy. And this is actually a scriptural thing because what happens is that when God calls someone to be a prophet, what God does is that he prunes this person, he trains this person to know the ways of God and to know what God requires of him. And then God gives him the power to speak. So what happens is that there are prophets like those very high levels of that, of that prophetic gift is that you actually speak words out of your own emotions and, and then God fulfills them. And we can see this from like that story of Elisha, the prophet. Remember there was a time there were some young men who were, I think they were mocking him because I think he was bald or something. And then he got angry. And then he called, was it a bear from the bush? Then it came and it killed all those, were they 42 young men or something? So you see, like that was just something that the, like Elisha spoke out of his own emotions because he was a prophet and those people had annoyed him. And so he just called a bear out of the bush to come and kill those, uh, like, to kill those young men. And it actually came out and it killed them. So it wasn't really that God wanted that bear to, come out and kill them but it was just that God had like God had anointed Elisha to be a prophet and because of that whatever Elisha like would speak in the spirit God is obligated to do it like God has to do it and this also explains why most of the prophets actually they had to live secluded lives reason being God like the only way God could control that power that he had given to those prophets was by using hard circumstances so it would like God would have to use those tough situations to actually move these prophets to wherever they like wherever he wanted them to move but you see God could not dictate what they were to say they had their own will and they would speak out of their own will and then God would actually fulfill it so what God would do is that God would like give them that power, but then at the same time, it was like the power that was given to them. So like what the Bible says, the spirit of prophecy is subject to the, to the prophet. So basically when God gives that, like when God gives that gift to a prophet, then it means that the prophet has full power over what to do with that gift. So it is a very sensitive spiritual, uh, like a very sensitive spiritual calling that uh, God will usually prune you a lot before he can entrust you with that kind of power. But then there is also the gift of prophecy, basically from the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the gift of prophecy is where the Holy Spirit actually like, like enables you to tap into 
that ability to prophesy. And this will usually happen because you have connected yourself to the Holy Spirit to a level where he can actually permit you to like have uh, prophecies. And as you know, the Holy Spirit has, uh, like there are those gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, those gifts, are like we have the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of interpreting tongues, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of uh, healing, the gift of prophecy. So you see, what happens is that all these gifts, they are given by the Holy Spirit. And so what happens is that if you have one gift, say praying in tongues, and you pray in tongues and charge yourself to a level where you are so, like you are so intimate with the Holy Spirit, what will happen is that the Holy Spirit will give you permission to also tap into the other gifts. So that if, if, uh, the, like if you have prayed in tongues and soaked in the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, and you want to receive revelations, basically you will just ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelations, and then those revelations will be given to you courtesy of the gift of knowledge, because the revelations is actually knowledge. And then if you, if you want to make a decision in your life, and you pray in tongues, what those tongues will do is they will get you in the spiritual realm, they will soak you in the Holy Spirit, but then when now you want the Holy Spirit to show you the way forward or concerning the decision you want to make in your life, then that will have to be given to you courtesy of the gift of wisdom, because wisdom is the gift for making decisions, so that the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom concerning that decision that you actually want to make. And so it is the same thing if you want a prophecy over your own life, or you want to, like, uh, if, like if you just want to have prophecies, because there are just prophecies that are general that God gives to anyone who actually wants them, so that God may show you things like things that are yet to happen or something that is yet to come, just for you to know ahead of time. Other people usually have dreams of things to come, and then those things happen exactly as they dreamt. So those are what people call prophetic dreams. So when you pray in tongues, actually you can also just ask the Holy Spirit and he will actually just reveal to you those uh, like type of prophecies. And one good example I remember was there was, there was a time I was praying in tongues a lot. And then it was in the evening. And then I needed to go to the market. But then when I walked out of the house, I saw like there was dark clouds and it was about to rain. But then the, like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, that rain, it will not start raining until you have like gone and bought whatever you wanted to buy. And it will take me about uh, almost like half an hour to go to the market and come back. And so because I had been given that prophecy that that rain would not begin until I had done my shopping, I just walked, uh, like I just walked to the market to get whatever I wanted to get. And sure enough, those dark clouds just stood there for all that time. I went to the market, got whatever I wanted to get, then came back. It was only after I had come back that actually it began raining. So you see, there are those kind of low-level prophecies that are important for us in our lives. Sometimes you may be in a situation that maybe it is making you so much scared. And you see, you just need a prophecy to tell you that you will actually be successful like in a particular matter. So that you don't get scared even though things may look scary at that time. So those kind of prophecies are the ones that actually the Holy Spirit will give to you if you do pray in tongues. But then, of course, if you have been called to be a prophet, for you it's going to be a little different. It's going to be a little more extreme. And then there are uh, like more extreme training. Like there is, there is more extreme training that the Holy Spirit will actually take you through before he can entrust you with um, those deeper levels of prophecy. So today what I would want us to do is um, I would like to show you how you can actually pray in tongues and uh, ask the Holy Spirit to give you prophecies about your, about your own life. Now, how this will happen is that at first it will either be through dreams. So there are people who if you pray in tongues and ask the Holy Spirit to give you prophecies, he will show you what will happen in your dreams. You will see yourself 
uh, in whatever situation you want a prophecy about, you'll see yourself in a dream in that situation. But then there are uh, like the other ways that the Holy Spirit can actually just speak to you directly at that particular time concerning your own life. Now, there was a time I was in church and we had a brother in church who had uh, that very sharp gift of prophecy. And you see, what happened was that he was giving people prophecies. So basically, he would give a prophecy and he would detail it based on the, uh, on the person it belongs to. So sometimes he would actually use like, uh, like uh, the name of the person. So he would say uh, somebody's name and what God is saying about that person. Other times he would use like the date of birth of that person. Other times he would use like the phone number of that person. So he would just say something like, uh, the person who, like he would say, this is the phone number I am seeing. And then he would say, this is what the Lord is saying. So what happened is that there was a day he actually made, a, like he made a prophecy. And then he gave details of the person whom that prophecy belonged to. But then nobody in church actually could meet those details. And so he like stood there waiting for like somebody to, like stand up or lift up his hand and say, I am the one. But nobody was actually, stand, like nobody was, was, was actually standing up. So what happened is that what this brother did know was that he had actually given a prophecy about himself and he had given details about himself, but he was so caught up in the spirit that he, like, he did not even realize that it was his own prophecy. So it was the people in the church who like knew him, who actually shouted to him and told him that it was his own prophecy. And so that is when he realized that he had actually prophesied to himself. So you see like the Holy Spirit can actually overshadow you and give you like those prophecies and even enable you to prophesy over yourself even without your own knowledge. So it is very, very possible and it is something that you can actually train and uh, like commune with the Holy Spirit so that he can help you also operate in that way and just enjoy yourself and have a good time receiving prophecies from God. Who doesn't want prophecies? You see, I'm already excited actually about uh, what I'm about to do today. Uh, it is a very exciting thing. So I will pray in terms and then this is what I would want you to do. What you do is uh, probably have a book and like have a, have a notebook and a pen. I have my notebook here. And uh, of course I have a pen. So what happens is that you will pray in tongues and then once you feel you are soaked in tongues and you feel you are more stable in the spirit, what you do is you just what? Write down what is coming to your mind. You will basically just make a prayer and then you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you things about your own life. And then you just write down whatever comes to your mind. Because that is how the Holy Spirit will actually reveal to you what he wants to reveal to you concerning your own life. So we are going to do a practical session. So I will just make a prayer and then we'll begin. Holy Spirit, I give you honor and glory. There is no one else but you. You are our helper. You are our guide. You lead us in the ways of the Father. You lead us according to the ways of the Son. Today, Lord Almighty, it is my prayer, O oh God, for myself, for my brothers, and for my sisters, O oh my Father God, that you may reveal to us, O oh my Father Lord, your prophecies concerning our own lives, O oh God. Teach us, O oh my Father, to get prophecies from you. Teach us to get direction from you. Teach us to get revelations from you, Holy Spirit. How I pray that you may feed our minds, O oh my Father, with your revelations. You may feed our minds, O oh my Father, Lord, with your prophecies. You may feed our minds, O oh my Father, with your truth, O oh my Father, as we pray in tongues, O oh my Father, Lord. Thank you because I know your grace is sufficient. And thank you because I know my brothers and my sister, O oh God, all of them shall receive, O oh my Father, Lord, this grace to have prophecies in their own lives from you, Lord Jesus Christ. I honor you and I bless you, Holy Spirit, because I know you are doing it for us. Amen. Yeah, so that is just the sort of prayer that you make. 
and then the Holy Spirit will, the moment you just begin praying in tongues, it will just begin revealing to you things, and then you can just write them down. The reason why I want you to write them down is because they, be, they may be many things, so you may forget some of them, and that is why I would want you to write them down. Then another thing is that sometimes he may give you knowledge in bits. So if you write down, it will be easier for you to actually see a link between all those things that you have written down rather than trying to just remember them. But of course, once you have grown in, like you have trained and done this for a while, it will be much easier for you to just um, like receive things from the Holy Spirit directly without necessarily having to write them down. So um, let us pray. And then I will write uh, what I get. And um, I will pray that the Holy Spirit may reveal to me things, uh, not necessarily concerning my own life, because for me, I can uh, easily receive them concerning my own life. But I also pray that I may receive things concerning uh, you people, uh, because the Holy Spirit knows you people who will be watching. So, of course, if there is something he wants to speak to any of you, I will pray that he may reveal to me that I may just share it with you. Yes, so that is it. Let us begin. Elekra shala mal kotra zolia shani enzele grali of lashkanja malafrelda klosia moshkanera maria krosh kanzele vrakla giliabo rosgada le frasha malengebra de la scania manje clam prikial de vrash konzela prokial de crasho la glepato le anje caria boria koshenga le bradli palezaldo pele gradio shank lam bregia de sconjabo de lam bragio de scanjele gradio scanjebo le gradio scanstragheda shem palagrida Jeco de la gradio shenta la gradio scazo caldo le gradia stencla de la gradio scastera gle graldo scapele gradio stare clavo le angrelda scombala de pa reangiu cadia beria cacendo le aboria balle graveschi angeva al gradia scole praldasco vez gandia bascangela brickli gradio champa la grenfos craldeshabo le ambricchi al de frangele gradio si angele in brac la gradio scampale bragadia scenstra gea de la cranta gemalo rempalia gossia gantesha calima ria Shuli gatolia mashkangele pra comal keza be alegra desh conchele em pragio desh canstre da alegra dios cancheba lingra dios canstre gante scantelam pregia lembra glendra cascheniam palagrel dios cancheba lingra dios constre gadela shemplo gradios cancela pregia desh camani le asulu gatanja gadiam desh cancele vraco lembra galdresh constre gadela desh canja lembra gio de fanchola bregia dos cancele gradio shiangeba lembra gadiange pagodeba riango sheba gadiam desh ogeda lembro galiasco lembra gedias cole shampo le gradio sangevi lembra kela jontalia joro e malos ki aluria kalos canjuru aregresia val cascenica bacra gelam vricla grelio shambla gramesco em le gradi o shamba le gran vaggio le embra clish cangia bala crange bale frangevo le ambre chi al desh cangevo le frangela pragadi angeco de flangia la praca al denzaro be allegra scengia balacra be allish cangia valo grande spiongiamo le ange carian be carian gio al kepla riange shonga ci angela frank la grelli o shama al cronge bade l'ambre gash kemplo gradi o shiam bala bado re ambe le gradi o scangela ambre chi al de frangiavo le ambe le gladi Gladios que angeba de flangia, pala grandios que angel em bragio de flangeba del caro. Lembra gadio shempa le gradio schiancele brachi al descampo le gradio scanstrega de la shamna beli gradio scampe le bragio de scanstrebo lembra gadio shampe le gradio scampe le gradio scangeba de Lembra gio de scangele gradio scangele bo le angrodia foncia glembra gheda vlencia kelpa rianche le gradio scantele gramialchi pala grandia scenga malosaia masceria gonta riasco velge a pregda le schio giamba le frangima le ngiugli prachio le vaschio ngepa le gramo sia rolda a plagrelio sciano scanzololo le glado sciala moschia vensca gebado rambrevia la sciamta lemba scrodel masciona belle gram bi Lia flanzolo vrangli giolo d'alstra lepa li ange cadiam bele gradio scempa le grandio schiangeva limbra gladio scange malco empla gradio scianfas grelia show mal capre li ambre clades congeba di rimbra clash kencio lembra chial de frongiano lembra clagengo lembra chial roscan ze palco 
Embla gradios canche, bala grandios canse, templa gradios champadi, grandias conche, bade clavro, gatolia zoco, toliange, code vlange, bade, lempra giadesh canse, de la pragadio chambi, le gradios champe, le graldos cragebo, le ambrecia de la foge gantorima, le anjuri gladros cachamel tranjo, badi, rimbra sheca de flangia, bala crambestio zamel clota legiano, magadia zoca tenja gotolo, mea sogo gia glufra clagen. Na malangribia skonjabo del kamyo. Yeah, so I've prayed for a few minutes, and uh, there's quite a lot that the Holy Spirit has revealed to me. So I will share with you. Uh, first, the Holy Spirit was uh, showing me a lady. So this was a lady, and she was planning to move from uh, like an urban center. She wants to move to a rural area. And then the Lord was saying she can go ahead because that is in his will for her to move from the urban center to the, to the rural place. And actually what the Lord was showing me was a country, um, I think it should be Switzerland, because yeah, it was a um, very beautiful and very green rural areas. And I, I do think that looked like Switzerland. And then there was, a, a, like, the Lord also gave me a country, uh, this country called Guatemala. And then, the, like, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that there is a person who is, contem uh, like, contemplating, vying for a political seat in that particular country. And then the Lord is saying to you, you can go ahead. That is also in his will. And then there was a woman uh, who had a child, and um, people are suspecting, like people are suspecting you that uh, that, like you got that child out of, like out of wedlock. It's like people don't believe that uh, you got that child with your husband, and you are really struggling because of that. But then the Lord says he, like he is coming to rescue you and sort that situation for you. And he was giving me that example of Mary, the mother of Jesus, that time when she was pregnant with Jesus. And that pregnancy was not from Joseph, and Joseph wanted to leave her. And then the Lord, of course, sent an angel to tell Joseph not to divorce Mary. So that is the same situation I was seeing this woman in, and the Lord says, he's coming for you. And then the last one that I received was a, a lady called... Lillian, and uh, she is contemplating, like um, getting, like she has been having sort of um, a desire to get close to God and to get intimate with God, but for some reason, like for some reason, she has been postponing it. So the Holy Spirit was saying, like this is the sign for you to actually go, like go ahead with that first, because that is what the Holy Spirit is just revealing to me now that she was contemplating doing a fast to get close to God, but she has been postponing it. So this is like the sign for you to actually go ahead because the Lord is waiting for you. Now, those were like, that was just an example of uh, actually how you can pray and receive prophecies. So normally, if I would want to receive prophecies about somebody that I am talking to or somebody that I am praying with, usually I'll just ask the Holy Spirit, then I'll pray in tongues and then he will just reveal to me uh, the same way he has just like revealed these things to me because these things were not things I would ever like think about. So of course I just know it's the Holy Spirit who has revealed them to me. And you see, even though I don't know the people I have spoken to, I know the Holy Spirit himself knows them and I know he will uh, do it just because he has spoken it himself. So you can always do this, practice it with yourself, practice it with even other people, pray with them and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things about them, like um, to reveal to you things about them, to reveal to you things about them, so that you can like sharpen that ability to actually get those prophecies. And then you can also operate in this prophetic gift so that you will be praying in tongues, uh, soaking in the spirit, and then you can also help in the body of Christ with uh, these prophecies. And then something else you also need to know is that uh, when you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal you in to reveal to you information about other people. Usually those other people have to give you consent before the Holy Spirit reveals their information to you. 
Because even though the Holy Spirit knows the information about them, if they don't allow the Holy Spirit to reveal their information to you, the Holy Spirit cannot reveal their, that information to you. This is also why you may usually see prophets, they begin asking people questions. So the reason why they will be asking you questions is because they want to get your consent. So when they get your consent by answering their questions, what happens is that now they can request the Holy Spirit to now give them more information about you uh, to them so that they can actually prophesy and like speak over your life. So also that is something like that is something you need to be aware of uh, just uh, when you are operating in this gift of prophecy. But overall, it's a very simple thing. And uh, just as I have done it, you see, it's, uh, it comes very, like, very natural to me. So I just give glory to God and I thank God for what he's doing. So that is what I had to share with you today. That's what I had to teach you a little bit today. Of course, if you have questions, you can always ask. And if you also want a one-on-one -on -one session, probably you can also uh, email me. Then, of course, I can arrange so that we do some practicals with you also, so that you also grow in this gift if you are interested. So I am here to serve you as the Lord has taught me and given me the grace. I will do my best to help you and share with you. So that is it for today. God bless you.